right? How else is that? Could he do chesed? That doesn't mean God is physical. No, because the, 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 no, because we have to describe him in more detail. You know, he's a great guy. What, what does that mean? Yeah. I'm talking about a person. He's a great guy. What does that mean? What does that mean? He's a great guy. That means he can he can hit the ball out of the park. What does that mean? He's a great guy. Right. It's it's like so general. God is everything. What is everything? For us to relate to be able to process that, you have to become more detailed. He's Godel, he's Gibor, he's Nora, he's whatever. <coughs> okay, ready to start the first Halach and Shulchan Aruch. Okay. He's Gabe Kari, Lamod Baboker, Lamod Zboro. Mishnah Kirke Ovos, right? Ventemo. He should be Gibor Kari. So when does this manifest itself? When should this characteristic be applied? When you get up in the morning? Is Gabe Karig, Lamud Baboka Lamud is Boro. Wait. She who Maura Shachar, this language, she Maura Shachar, that's from by Dovna Melech, quotes a puzzle, right? Most people, why they awake in the morning? Because of course of the light, right? After dawn. You should awaken dawn. You should be up before dawn comes. She who Maura Esa Shachar. Let's take a look at the Mishnah Burrow. 40. The Gemara is a stira. Grofus. The Gemara is a stira. Lavod. Lavod is borrow. Person should be his gavalari. Lamod baboke for what? For what? To catch a plane. To Spain. Right? Lavod is borrow. To serve your, your creator, your maker. Why were you created? You created to serve him. The Navi says, All that's called my name it was created for my glory. This is pre preheated houses, homes. He says, Even though your inclination may pressure you in the winter, how do you get up? It's frigid outside. You know, stay under the covers. Oh, Yashienu Bakait Slome Echtamo Bitosko Adain Lo Savat Mishnosko. You know, in the summer, the nights are short. At one time, the person slept at night. Why? Because it wasn't the time for the productivity. So everything came to a standstill. But in the summer, you hardly slept. The, night, the nights are short. Echtamo Bitosko Adain Lo Savat Mishnosko. You haven't slept sufficiently. Is Gaber Olov. Velo Yishmalo. You have to overpower your inclination and not listen. The Yashu and you have to think regarding yourself. Yeah, you're expecting a call from Putin at 3 o'clock in the morning. Say, you know, tell him it's too early. Let him call some other time. Putin calls at 3 in the morning. You're up at 1 waiting for the call at that's if you, if you speak Russian. Okay? Kam ho yuzoi vizor is lamad bashkoma lehoven atzmo lehochen atzmo lehodoso. How much would he be careful and be, be motivated to rise even earlier to prepare yourself for that service? When I talk about to rise for the service, to prepare for the service. Koshkin kavachom ben menoshel kavachomer. So, with every level of definiteness, you shouldn't rise. No people, you know, out of bed straight into shul. No, get up. You have to, you know, come to yourself. You rise sufficiently. It's not that you're in a daze when you begin davening. There's a famous story, you know, with the Satmar Rebbe. Satma Rebbe, you know, he did daven very late. So they asked him, he says, Vayashkim Avram Baboker, Vayachvosh Chamoro, he rose early, hitched his donkey. So Avram, there's a, there's, a, there's a concept that Morris says, Zuzim Akdim Lamitzvah, you have to do things with alacrity, with zeal, you have to do it early. 
So how do you start davening so late? How do you daven so late? That was the day after Sabbath. Sabbath besides being God was a genius and he knew exactly always what to say. He, he says he rose to hitch his donkey. He says, I rise early. He says, I'm busy with my donkey the whole time. I'm in preparation to prepare to be able to be able to serve Hashem. That's the Yahvosh. It says he rose to hitch his donkey. The donkey Chamor is the Chomer, the physicality. I have to prepare my physicality to be in a state of mind, in the physical state, to be able to serve Hashem. That's, the, that's what I'm busy with. It's not I'm not involved. With, I have plenty of zeal. Hashochar. Mechaber says, you should awaken dawn. The Shalom cause of Sod. The Shalom writes something which is on a Sod, meaning on a secretive level, a Kabbalistic level. Mechaberi on v'lai Torah. You should always connect day and night with Torah. Let's say you're going from day to night, you should span that gap with Torah. If you're going from night to day, all should be spanned with Torah. Obit tefillah. Ov with tefillah. Tefillah is we're talking about like tefillah. Heim baboke heim berev. Whether it's in the morning or the evening. So Baruch Hashem, the morning we span it. Here. Right? We span it. Torah we start, it's already night. It's still night. We expand it into the day. Umiyad kishis. Or bishnoso. Now what about a person who awakens in the morning? That would be very important. Vena rotz el lisho. And you know you're up. You're not going back to sleep. But people, you know, they can lie in bed for half an hour until they get out of bed. Ye told Yodov. Avshinisha Bushka is very important. You know, what do we wash in the morning? We call Neva Vasa. It has to be washed, as we'll see later, in a specific way. Alternate, alternate, alternate to him. But there's a question later. Is it three times or four times? Or no, it, you can only remove the Ruach Atuma only if you alternate the hands. Right? It's a question later. But the Ebed, even at three on each hand or four on each hand, removes the Ruach. But it says, but if you're lying, but that Ruach Tuma is considered something very unhealthy. It's, uh, it's, it's something which is detrimental to one's spirituality, even your physicality. The Mara says, until you wash your hands, you're not permitted to touch your eyes, your nose, any opening in, in the body, you're not permitted. The Mara says, it, it's a Sakona, ultimately. So if that's the case, if you lie in bed and you're not going back to sleep, you should wash your hands immediately. You should wash them. Because having that Ruach HaTuma, that contaminated spirit on your hands, is something unhealthy. What about if you can walk around? You're not permitted. The Gemara says you're not permitted to walk four cubits. We'll see later. It's a Shiloh. If you're within the same structure, the whole structure is considered Baal Amos. And they rely on this in Yeshivas. You know? They, in, in certain Yeshivas, they don't want boys to have what we call Negel a basin by the bed with water. Why? Because ultimately, the floors get ruined. They spill it on the floor. The, the basin gets knocked over. You know, it becomes, you can imagine you have 100 students, 200 students, and every day, you know, it's inevitable 50 of the basins are knocked over. So, you have, you know, the floors get ruined. So they say, we rely, we'll see later, this is based on Elia Rabo, that if it's under one structure, that's called Dalaramos. As long as it's within, you're not leaving that structure to go to another building. That's all Dalaramos. He says, you have to be very careful to remove this, this Ruach Tum immediately when you get up, or minimally not to walk Dalaramos. And the Zohar speaks ex extremely and uh, continuously about the punishment for this. Allowing this Ruach Tum to remain on the person. It's interesting. I mean, the Sita of Frank speaks about this. You know, in America, Goy doesn't have Ruach Tum. Only a Jew. Okay? You buy, you go to a kosher bakery. And the counter person, man or woman, not observant, but it's a Jew, but not observant. They didn't wash Megabasa. They said they touched the bread. The serving of this before, they used gloves, the same gloves they touched the money and touched the bread because they want to see if you know how hygienically clean. Right? Right? But they touched, you know, if they're wearing gloves, not a problem. Of course. But if you, they touch the food with related, the Mechaber says, if before you wash now, you touch the food, you're not, you're not supposed to eat that food. The food, because it's transferred, that Ruach HaTum is transferred over onto the food. Okay? So if that's the case, and he speaks, or it's the case of Frank, like in Israel, you have the vegetable and food vendors. 
so they set out everything in the morning, the fruit and vegetables, it's a problem. So if they're not observant people, they didn't wash properly, they didn't wash at all, whatever it is, and they're touching the fruit. Or what about, you know, you have patrons, you have customers coming, and they start, going, they start picking, picking and choosing the fruit. So and you live in a Jewish community, many of the people are Jews, not, not observant Jews, and they're touching the, the fruit, and the fruit's not prepackaged. So what happens? It's a problem. It's a problem. What about if you go to a dentist, and the dentist himself is not an observant Jew? That's the story of the Chazon Ish. And he puts his fingers in your mouth, right? It's a problem. So you'd say, you go, make sure to be the fourth or fifth patient. By the time he gets to you, he's washed the same multiple times, so you don't have to worry about it. Right? every moment of his life was fully invested in Torah. And one night, maybe two, three in the morning, he, was, he had a tremendous toothache to the point where it actually interfered with his thought process that he was in such pain. And he was always, he studied, he delved very deeply. But because of the pain, he wasn't able to. So he figured a review, just review, not apply himself to a greater degree. Reached the point, even that. So it'll be Mabi Sedra. Kumish Rashi reached the point, it was excruciating, couldn't. To say Tillin. Reached the point, it's not possible. Could even to say Tillin, the pain was too, too excruciating. So he had somebody who always was with him when he was older, so after his wife passed away. So he asked him to go call a dentist, an observant dentist in B'nai Brock. He woke him up at 3 30 in the morning. Person didn't mind being woken up, comes to meet to the house with the Chazanish, and he explains him what he has. He says, The Chazanish, open your mouth. I want to have to check. The Chazan, before he puts his hands in, he says, I want to ask you, did you, he says, I don't want to insult you. I don't want you to be offended. Did you wash Nagarasa? He says, Of course I wash Nagarasa. Then he says, uh, Three times or four times? He says, Four times. He says, Okay. Now he's, but he says, he says, I don't, he says, The reason why I don't want you to be offended, he says, I'll tell you why. This is my whole life I've dedicated to the study of Torah. Besides the danger of the Ruach going into it, being put into your mouth, he causes one to forget his Torah. He says, my whole life is my Torah. I'm living for my Torah. So to put my Torah in jeopardy, because there's a chance maybe you didn't wash right, he says, God, pain, no pain. There's no way you're putting your hands in my mouth. I'm not putting my life in danger, which my whole life is my Torah. That's the story. Okay? Some people put their foot in their mouth. Okay? There's no rough tomorrow on their feet. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> no, he says, that's not Pikabola. He says, No, 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 no. Throughout. No, 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 no. It says you should study unceasingly Torah. So it doesn't mean Yom Belaylo. No, what the Torah is saying, you have to connect them. There should be no interruption day and night. Torah should, should infuse the day and the night. There should be no interruption between day and night in regard to Torah study. That's what the Torah. That's what the pasuk say. This is very important. Let's a person rises in the morning. He has a tremendous urge to urinate. And he has to withhold himself because he says, I want to first wash my hands. He's doing the wrong thing. Because the Gemara says, you, no, no, not only your kidneys. You could actually, a person, it could ultimately cause an infection which could lead to, to sterility, causing an infection. Let's say somebody else prepared Negel Vasa. And you're going to use his Negel Vasa. You're going to be a tzadik on somebody, a tzadik on somebody else's cheshmer. I'm saying, better don't wash Negel Vasa and do the heavy. It's, it's considered stealing. Then came the story with the Chavetz Chaim. God, I've got to give uh, a Machi a full dose of story this morning. The Chavetz Chaim, you know, he's world renowned to be a Chosid. And a guest. He had a guest. 
Chofetz Chaim, you know, so you ever go to a Hasidic house, they say all kinds of things before they get to Shalom Aleichem. They, they rise and they're shaking and they're swaying, you know. The only thing that's not swaying is the chandelier. Everything else is swaying. You know, by Hasidim. You know, by a person who's not a Hasid, you say one, you know, you say, uh, you, you start with Shalom Aleichem, Leishas Chaim, go straight to Kiddush. Right there, there's a whole thing, 15, 20 minutes even before you get to, to, to Kiddush. Okay? To Chofetz Chaim, person comes, guest Chofetz Chaim's house. Straight to the Kiddush. No Shalom Aleichem, no Eishas Chayil. Straight to the Kiddush. Person's amazed. This is the world renowned Tzadik Chosid, holy man. Go straight to Kiddush. What's the urgency? You know? So he says to the Chofetz Chaim, he says, you know, I don't want to ask any question, but he says, you know, minimally, Shalom Aleichem. He says, I want to explain you something. The wor- girl who works in this house is a, is a Yosoma, is an orphan. She's been up since Thursday night all night preparing for Shabbos, cleaning the house, cooking, helping my wife cook, so and so forth. She hasn't slept. She barely could stand on her feet. You know, it's important for her to eat immediately. He says, What well, I'm going to be a tzaddik, say, Shalom Aleichem, Elisha Schail, and delay her that she shouldn't be able to eat. You know, she has to go to sleep. Yeah, that was the Chobot Chaim. Famous story that Ruby Sol Salanta, too. The Gemara, the, the, based on the Gemara Chulim, the Mechaba rules that when you wash pills, you don't have to use. Early years, a good good idea versus the insurance company. That if you use an abundance of water from pills, it's a school of full wealth, full wealth, Ashivos. So Rabbi Shol Salanta, who was the Godel Ador, who instituted the whole Muslim movement, he was, he was a guest at someone's house, and he uses the minimal amount of water just to wash pills, the minimal. So somebody looks at him amazed. You should gush it on. Just pour it on in a gush. He says, I want to ask a question. He says, who do you think brings the water to the house? Somebody has to go to the well, carry a bucket or a barrel of water on his back. What, I'm going to be a tzaddik that this man has to take, bring more water? The less often he has to do it, the less of a burden it is. Where do I have a right? Understand? This is godless. This is Gedoli Yisrael. You're not compromising the halacha, but to be able to benefit something which is not the obligation, I have no right to do that can't be a tzaddik on somebody else's cheshmer. Em lo she borlo, he says, now this is important. Em lo she borlo she take up to moros macherim. She yitain take up to moros macherim. He says, you can take somebody else's water. If the moment you finish, you can replace the water immediately. Because we could say with, with certainty, the person wouldn't mind. Right? But very often, you know, a person borrows a pair of tilling. You don't have to ask permission. You use somebody else's tilling. But you know something? Or somebody else's tilling. You have to rewrap it exactly as you found it. If not, it's considered gzela. It's considered stealing. Because we could say, we could say with certainty a person would want somebody else to be able to be able to his object, the mitzvah. But that's only if you put everything back to where you found it. But you somebody's the person bought it, they just leave it un, 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 just unraveled on the table. The towel's just thrown on top of the throne. They walk out. Person comes back, he can't even find his talisman filling. So, what? The, man, the man's a thief, right? People don't think. People borrow books; they never return the books. Never return them. Svarim. But if you're going to take it and you're going to return it immediately, it's not a problem. I'll tell you the truth. You know, in yeshiva, you know, people have names. So, uh, you can borrow somebody else's tomorrow. You know. You want to look at something. It's not you can sit and learn with it. Where he needs the Gemara for himself, because everybody has his own Gemara. You should. It's like Lahavdi left the, like textbooks. You have your own textbook, so you have your own Gemara Lahavdi. Okay. But sometimes these, these certain boys used to write cannot be used without explicit permission. Can't have to be right in the, in the, in the Gemaras. You understand? It, it tells you a little bit about the person. You know. You don't breathe the air in this room unless I give you permission. No, those, they give ice, ice in the air. They don't even give ice away in the winter, these kinds of people. Whatever it is, this kind of person. There's a certain person in Yeshiva, you know, in the olden days, where the food wasn't today. Food is a, at a something on a quality level. In those days, it wasn't. So once in a while, they would give danishes. When they have a dairy, dairy a meal, a certain person, and they would put enough only f- they had six people, eight people on a table, they put six. Come t- to the table, and I see this person, this person was a South African. They would be, so he was a South African. And I see he, he, has, he, hasn't, he hasn't even gone, he already has two Danishes. Next thing. So I said to him, I said, I said, 
There's only enough for the people on the table. How do you take two? That's what he said to him. How do you take two? And we're not talking when he was, he was 10 years old. He was about 20 years old, 21 years old at the time. He said, how do you take two? He said, well, it's true, but you realize it's inevitable there could be extras in the dining room. So if the person can't find it, he'll go to another table and take from another table. Yeah, here's what he answers. This man today is 69 years old and was never married. You got it? Uh, that's, that's what I'm telling you. He, was, he never got married. 69 years old. That, that's where he's, you know, he's still looking for the Danishes. You know, he's sending the guy to the next table for the Danishes. Okay. Whatever it is. Bikiso, Bikaso, Bikoso. Certain idiosyncrasies reveal everything about the person. Okay. Wait. Biyashin Ikshalom Bozeh. Im Eru Shamayim Rechokim Meilo Maim Shekorv Meilov. He says, unfortunately, people, they fail in this area. The, the water, the source of water is far away. And they don't, they don't replace it. People who are machmir, they don't have water available. He says, you shouldn't go down and almost without washing every vessel. So they walk, they don't walk in one stretch for almost. It's like on Shabbos. If you carry, when you're in violation on a Torah level. Only if you, from the location of the, where you remove it to, you come to rest, it's for almost. If, let's say, you stop before, rabbinically, you're not permitted to do it. Then, you didn't violate the Torah law. So they, not to be in violation of this, where they have no choice, they walk less than Dalar Amos, continuously. Because Shari Tshuva al Zed lo Nira. Shari Tshuva disagrees. It doesn't help you. Dot of Yoshi Elchum Mevrutza. It's better to go quickly. Shalahashis Ruach 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 Yodo. It's not to delay. The longer the Ruach Ruach remains on your hands, it's better to go more quickly Oh, this is it. Kola Beso Kedalan Amos Dami. There's an opinion that says that as long as it's with one, one structure, it's considered one dollar Amos. Avalin Lismo Chalzer, he says, but you shouldn't rely on this opinion. Ki'im Bishasat Chak, only if you have no choice. So in Yeshiva, one second. One second. Six feet. So let's say from your be bed to your bathroom, it's less than six feet. Maybe more. Okay? So then you should have Negovasa. But, but otherwise, he says, you have a right to rely on what? On, uh, on, the, on this opinion. It's Eli or Rabba. That the structure is considered Dalar Amos. I remember my Lashuva, he said once told me a story. You know, Rabbi Taitz, he was the, like the chief rabbi of Elizabeth. How did he become chief rabbi of Elizabeth? So Rabbi Taitz learned tells in Europe and tells needed money. And he was a, sing he was a single, single boy, single student. And they sent him from Tells to raise money in America. To raise money in America. You know, like, you know, he had a, he had a radio program. Years ago, he used to say a, a, a block of every Saturday, Mozart Shabbos on, on the radio. It was famous. Hundreds of people used to listen to the radio. He was, a, he was a presence, he was a personality, and he was, he, he, he was an orator, order. he was able to speak, so they figured he was a good person. They sent him to the United States to raise money. So in those days, we're talking about this is in the, um, the 20s, maybe the, the 30s, early 30s. Even people who had, were observant, let's say you'd have a daughter, you had nobody to match her up with. How do you find, find a spouse for your daughter? The road has a daughter. He raised his daughter to mm -hmm. with certain values. Now she has to have a husband. The men had no interest in what, what the values and the, the perspectives that she, she was brought up with. So very often when a, a, a student would come from Europe, this was considered an unusual catch. So he came to raise money in New Jersey. And the chief rabbi of that area, his name was Rabbi Prail. Rabbi Prail was his name. Okay. He was the chief rabbi. He has, he has a grandson, children living in Teaneck. Yeah. Rabbi Prail. They're grandchildren. They're grandchildren. They were nephews of Rabbi Tights, the Prails. So, um, I heard the story from Rosh Hashanah. So, um, so, what happened was, so Rabbi Prail sees a person like Rabbi Tights, grabs him, this, this is, you know, you see, this, this is a dime, a gem. And he married Rabbi, Rabbi Prail's daughter. Rabbi Tides married Rabbi Prail's daughter. 
And when his father passed away, he became the chief rabbi of the whole area. That's how Rabbi Tais became the rov of, of, of Elizabeth, New Jersey. So now, so my reshiva, this was like in 1930. So the United States, he came over in 29. And he had to be in that area. So Rabbi Prail calls my reshiva and he says, you know, it would be my honor to have you to host you for Shabbos. Would you like to come for Shabbos? Because he needed a place. He had to be in that, in that area. So he says, okay, I'll come. So he said, Rabbi Prail only had daughters, had no sons. He had one son, one son. The trail's deaf father was the only son, but otherwise he had daughters, only daughters. And um, in those days, it was an unusual homes. The person wasn't literally poor. Every home had Persian rugs in the house. If you remember in the 50s, most homes, you didn't have uh, carpeting that was uh, stapled to the floor. You had like Persian rug. What? Yep, no, it was more than airy rug. It was, it was, it was a Persian rug. Those years wasn't so expensive. Persian rugs. So um, maybe somebody he tells my Shiva, you can invite it on one condition: you cannot have nego basa by your bed. Yeah, that's what he tells my Shiva. That's otherwise, what relevance the story after what we're talking about? Okay, on one condition: no nego basa by the bed. Howard, you got to have your eyes wide open for this story. Okay, so he says. What's the problem? He said, I'll tell you a story. He says, in 27 or 28, Reb Baruch Bear and his son-in-law came. They were guests for Shabbos. They were guests for Shabbos. And Reb Baruch Bear was, was, was a, a tzaddik of, of, a, of an unusual level. He would never, and he was machmir in every detail of everything. He was the Talmud Muvak of, of Reb Chaim Briska. He wanted Negevazah by his bed. Well, uh, come to his room. The carpet was soaked with negovas. <laughs> the Persian rug. He says, I'm not interested in that. You want to rely on the leniency that the house is considered Dalaramos? Fine. You don't want to rely on that leniency? I'm not going to th- go through that again. To have my rug soaked with negovas. I'm just telling you what he told Marashir. And secondly, he says, in my house, the meaning is the girl sings mirrors at the table. It's a question of Kalisha. You have to rely on certain leniencies. He says, I had Rabbi Baruch at the table. My daughter started to sing Smiris Friday night. Shabbos turned into Tisha B'Av immediately. <laughs> he says, I don't want Tisha B'Av. So those are the two preconditions. No negovas by the bed, and my daughter sings Smiris. So my Roshiva says to me, my Roshiva, his, his personality was that to be able to get his attention, when he went into his own world, you could have the world caving in. He was totally oblivious to it. So he, he was able to tune out very easily. So he said to me, this, he says, it's not a problem. Thought about something, he was out of touch. He heard nothing, and that was it. That was the story. So he accepted the invitation. He relied on the Dalaramos, that he had, didn't have Negovasa by his bed, and that, that, was, that was the story. Okay? 